Hello, Men of Hope. My name is Jack, and I attend the Wednesday morning Men of Hope in West Des Moines. Welcome to Holy Week. It's taken me a painfully long time to truly realize the implications of this week. Now, I grew up in a household where we went to church every week, did Sunday school and confirmation, but it wasn't until recently that I let myself believe in the true power of God and Jesus. Looking back, I can see that I had a pretty skeptical and safe faith. God is the supreme being that created everything. Jesus came and conquered evil. And all I could see was a need to check a bunch of boxes and I'll get into heaven. Check, check, check. And now, and that is how I sustained my shallow faith for the better part of my life. It took graduating from college and the realization of what responsibility really was to see that I had really no clue what I was doing. So the first thing I tried was pouring myself into self-help books and thinking that if I could be successful, life would fall into place. Long story short, it didn't. And I ended up at a Wednesday morning Men of Hope meeting. And this is where I learned how truly miraculous God is. Anyone listening to this now knows that we live in a world at war. We have the battles we can see and those we can't, but there's no doubt that evil has a foothold since the Garden of Eden. God has been at work since the fall to rid the world of evil by destroying the source. He started with animal sacrifice and the Ten Commandments, but we managed not to follow those. So that's when he had to come up with the plan. He would send his son to come and conquer evil and death. This plan comes to a climax here during Holy Week. Terry covered Palm Sunday in last week's devotion, and Mike took us into an even deeper dive, dive into the surprises this weekend. I can't help but feel the whirlwind of emotions everyone involved must have been feeling. You look at Jesus and his emotional arc through this week, how he must have felt knowing how the week would end and handling it so gracefully. Then I look to the disciples. The week starts off on a high, being part of the king's grand entrance only to have him die before the weekend. Then on Sunday, before they've even had a chance to get their mind right and mourn, his body's gone. And this is where this Sunday's verse enters, John 20, 1 through 8. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to a tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciple started out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stopped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there. While the cloth had covered, Jesus' head was folded and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. So put yourself in those shoes for a second, right? How hard would it have been to see the victory that Jesus had been telling you about for the last three years? I mean, after the events of the past few days, how could they not be consumed with all the negative thoughts, doubts, and fears to miss the greatest victory of all? They lived and talked to the man, and still they had a hard time seeing what, was, what had happened. Now, we have 2,000 years of hindsight and a completed Bible to study and lean on, but aren't those the same blinders on? Don't we still have those same blinders on today? The evil in the world seems to be as loud as ever and can reach you seemingly anywhere. It can be hard to remember that Jesus paid our debts and conquered evil. He made it so that if we follow him, we don't have to be afraid. We know what the future holds. And we can shed our fears and have faith that God will provide. So what do we do with that today? First, Dive into whatever time is left this week. Attend a service you haven't tried. Read one of the gospel accounts. Just pray. 
activate your faith and see what you discover. And second, we need to be the voices that drown out the negativity. Share the good news with not only those who don't know Christ, but reinvigorate those that do as well. Too often I forget to check with my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ and remind them of the good news. Yes, the events of this week are tragic, but remember the results. Good wins over evil, and Jesus defeats death. If that's not a reason to be excited, I'm not sure what is. Let us pray. Jesus, as we reflect on this week, we just thank you. Thank you for your sacrifice, and thank you for your love. Be with us this week to help us to see what you've done. Lift our fears and doubts and fill us with the hope and good news that your victory has brought us. We love you and we thank you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Have a great week, guys, and happy Easter.